Okay, hello. Um, <clears throat> welcome uh, to the Bell Tower. If you are new, um, welcome back again, of course, if you've always been here. Uh, today is January 4th, 2023. And I have a prophetic message, but at the same time, I also have the word, a scripture, the word given by the Lord to me um, last night. So uh, the title of this is Not One Blind Eye Turned. Um, Holy Spirit, I just, uh, yes, I will do, I want to do that too. But first, do you want me to? Okay, <laughs> gonna make sure we do it. Holy Spirit wants us to do. Um, Holy Spirit, I just invite you here, Jesus, uh, Yeshua. I invite you here, <clears throat> Papa God. I invite you here to have your way, your will, to do everything that you deem as right, because you are the only one who is right and good. So I thank you, Lord. You are the ultimate. You are forever. And I thank you, Lord. I thank you. We just humble ourselves. I humble myself before you, Lord. <clears throat> and I want to know you more and in a greater way. Please speak to your people any way that you see fit. And that we will forever be grateful. I know I will forever be grateful for everything that you do. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. So, um... Always got to be obedient to the Lord. And the one of the main things the Lord talks about is that we are to acknowledge him in all of our ways. In all of our ways. We acknowledge him. And so that is exactly what I like to do. Um, the Lord wanted me to share, and I didn't actually write it down um, yet, because it's kind of lengthy, you know, but I can share the gist of it, I'm sure. Lord, I thank you. It was an encounter I had. Okay. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. Um, with Jesus, an encounter I had with Jesus. And I've had a few, uh, just recently, I should say, I, I've, I've had many encounters with Jesus. I've had many encounters with Papa God. I've had <clears throat> just a few, well, <laughs> I've had encounters with Holy Spirit as well. A lot of times when I, uh, when I see Holy Spirit, I'm not seeing him. So for instance, I've seen Jesus tangible with my, you know, what we would say the naked eye. I've seen him, you know, <clears throat> like that a couple of times. Um, most of the time I'm seeing, I see him in visions, um, and in the spirit realm, the visions that he gives me, you know, I, I don't just have a vision. It's usually I'm doing something, <laughs> you know, and then I go into a vision that he's trying to show me, or sometimes I will say, Okay, Jesus, what do you want to do? <laughs> what do you want to do? You want, me, you want me to come to you? You coming to me? What, what, what are we doing? Am I am I going to visit and be with you in heaven? Are you coming here? You want to watch TV? You know, I like to watch baking shows with with Jesus and the Holy Spirit, and um, and it's fun because they're my best friends. I like we talk and we could just be together. But one of the visions that the Lord um, wanted me to, or excuse me, <clears throat> encounters that the Lord wanted me to share, um, was in regards to the intimacy of the Lord, the, the sweet intimacy of Jesus. I know a lot of people, and like, I know this probably, the, the, <laughs> it might make someone feel, um, it might stir those religious feelings, you know, where you get like, that Jesus wouldn't do that. Jesus went, yes, I'm, yes, he would. <laughs> like, yeah, not only that he would, he has, you know, so, um, so please, I just, before you even listen to it, all I want to say is, Lord, Heavenly Father, Jesus, Papa God, <laughs> Holy Spirit, open up the spiritual eyes 
open up the spiritual ears and the hearts of the people that they'd be able to receive you because the things of the spirit are discerned and received by the spirit, not the flesh. So we just thank, I just thank you, Lord, right now for every every single thing that you're doing and for eyes and ears and, and I say minds, but souls, your heart being open to receive this, receive from you, Lord, that they would receive from you and that they then in return would Yes, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Jesus is talking about hallelujah, Jesus. Yes, that they in return would have an encounter with you. Jesus was saying, I, that's what I was going to say. And Jesus, Jesus knew my thoughts, of course. And he said, because I am the door. Yes, he is the door. Because he is the door, he's the doorway to your encounters with him. He is the doorway to everything. He is. He is. There's no one greater no one greater than jesus papa god or you want to say father god or heavenly father i say all of them i just like calling him papa god i really do and <clears throat> you know i call him papa god to him well i call him papa but for the sake of in a video i say papa god for those who wouldn't know who what i'm talking about <clears throat> and holy spirit Hallelujah. Lord, I just think his Holy Spirit is also God. We have to understand that. He's not he's not just like the uh, some afterthought. He's also God. It's a triune God. We, you know, some there was a time where I said, "Do we say we worship you, Holy Spirit?" <laughs> like like can, can I say that? Like I was singing and then that that came out and I thought, "Can I say that?" Yes, because he is God. Okay, so <clears throat> he's God as well. So I'll try and do this a little quick because I am expecting somebody today. So, <laughs> hallelujah. Holy Spirit, actually, I'm just going to come with no agenda. Holy Spirit, I apologize because I want to be moved by the impulses of the Holy Spirit because that is what we are to do. If this ends up not being, if I don't end up giving this the word, I'll give it at another time. But I'm going to be obedient to the Lord and I'm going to do what he wants me to do. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I'm going to be obedient to you. And I lay my agenda down. Yes, I wanted to give out this word because it's the word that you gave me. But if this, I'll do whatever you want me to do. So <clears throat> in the vision, this vision that I had, I haven't actually spoke to anybody about, I haven't actually given this out or said any of this to anyone. Um, <clears throat> in this vision, this encounter, it's not a really vision. In this encounter with, G with Jesus. Uh, <laughs> thank you, Jesus. It segues because I had a very powerful encounter before the one I'm going to give you on Saturday. So I had a very, very strong encounter with the, with the Lord, Jesus, Christ himself. <laughs> and he was just gorgeous and beautiful and just shining. His face was illuminating. He, I mean, it was just so bright. I mean, it was... It was like he allowed me to look at it and not for me to be like, oh, you know, I can't see. But I could look at his face, but I couldn't see any of the features of his face this time. And I just 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 shining. But although I could see that he was smiling, I know that sounds strange. Please understand me. Not everything is explainable with human language. We don't always have have the ability to explain. <clears throat> not everything's explainable. And so, thank you, Holy Spirit. Yes, unless it be revealed in a way to be able to explain it or revealed to you by Holy Spirit. So, he was just gorgeous. But he was showing me a land in a field. And he was saying, I want you to build people here. I want you to build people. And he was confirming the things that which he spoke to me um, prior. And that I I didn't question, but I, I held them. And I, you know, waited to before I filed those away under these are absolute. A lot of time I have, you know, he'll say something and then I, you know, Lord, the confirmation. I just get the confirmation on it. And so he was confirming things to me. But that encounter that I had with him had literally had me. I was shaking. I was crying. I'm like, I didn't think I was, you know, I was supposed to be going on doing the declarations for this new year. And I didn't even know if I was going to be able to go on there because, I was having a hard time talking and then I got in there and then it's like I was still having that hard time and but Holy Spirit really helped me through it. So anyway, later I 
had was having this um I just started singing to Jesus and I started telling him I wanted to meet him because I meet him in places all the time <clears throat> in the spirit. <clears throat> and there's a, a place in particular with that, you know, we like to go and it's this field and it's beautiful and there's flowers and it's just lovely. And we were there together and <laughs> Jesus is very playful. He's very loving and he's so kind and he's gentle. I just love him so much. <laughs> I love him so much. And he he's so real. Um, he's so real. He's so transparent. He's so, yes, he's so easy to come to. And it's like when I was before him <clears throat> on that Saturday, I he had a hood on and I was going to like reach forward and slide it back off of his, off of his head, off his hair, because I love his hair. I just, you know, touch his hair. I love him. And, but he was like, oh no, please don't take my hood off. And I thought, oh, okay. You know, and he, and I take his hood off other times. So, you know, it was just my thing to do, but he was like, oh, please don't. And I'm like, okay. And I, we end up I ended up being underneath the hood with him because I was laying my head on his chest. That was on Saturday. Well, this encounter that I had um, later, um, he, you know, had his hood on and I just, you know, reached back to his hair, you know, and, <laughs> and, you know, and he just lets it fall back and he just looks at me and I'm just looking at him and he just looks at me with this look I just it's just this look you can see everything in you <laughs> he looks into your soul you know and but in such a loving way you know he just loves and he just looks at he just I wish words I just can't put words together enough he just oozes love and he's just looking at me with this love this lovely look as I'm you know, taking his hood off and, you know, touching his hair. And he's just watching me. He's just watching me. And he's so intrigued, you know. <laughs> he's just looking like this look where he's just so intrigued by what I'm doing. And I'm singing a song to him. <clears throat> and he's, thank you, Holy Spirit. He's enjoying being loved on. <laughs> I was saying intrigued. It's really, he's enjoying being loved on. He's just soaking it in, you know? And we we're sit, we sit down on this grass and this, this field. It's just the most beautiful grass. It's gorgeous. It's soft. It's short and lovely. And, you know, and I'm, I'm taking the flowers and I'm just taking the flower and I'm just running it around the trace of his face one of the flowers as I'm singing to him and telling him how wonderful he is and how much I love him and just everything, just pouring my heart out to him. Not my cares of what's going on, you know, <laughs> but just telling him how much I love him and, and I'm just running it around, the, tracing the outline of his face and and I'm just telling him all these things and and, you know, he just lays back and he's just got this look of just tell me more. <laughs> and I'm just telling him more and more. And, you know, and I play with him with the flower. Boop, boop. <laughs> you know, boop him with the flower. <laughs> he's so precious. I promise. He's not like, I'm you. How dare you do that? You know, he just loves it. He's so... He, so he's so intimate he's so yes holy spirit read song of solomon's or song of psalms depending on which translation and you he's so intimate he's so and it's it, it's it's so pure and it's something that you just cannot experience here on this earth you just cannot from anybody else he's the only one like um for instance I will say that to close out that that uh, encounter that I had, we I really just 
continue to just do that. I continue to just sing to him and, and just worship him and, and, and just love on him and tell him how I feel about him and just give him my heart again and again. And he just, he loves it. <laughs> he loves it. I, I invite you. I'm sorry. It's like something touching my face <laughs> and he, he loves it. And so he, he, I invite you to do the same and to tell him that you want to meet with him and you know you want to be with him because it wasn't always that I would go into these encounters there were times before I was really seeing Jesus that I just had to know he was here I just had to know and then begin to ask him I want to see you I want to I want to be with you I want to commune with you. Those things are those words. Those are his words. He loves those words. <laughs> Obviously, he loves covenants. He loves to commune with his people. Um, those who are true. And so I, um, and there's many, I'm not saying, you know, you're not. I'm just saying he loves to commune with his people, those who are true. Those who are true can enter into those holy of holies with him. Um, and he's, oh my, he's so magnificent. Holy Spirit, what was the other thing I was going to say? Okay, thank you. Um, the other thing I was going to say was he's so intimate. And there's like, for instance, I remember when I started pouring over the Song of Songs. I need this water. And, there, and, and um, <laughs> I mean, again, these, I, I never really, I didn't <laughs> I didn't really release or talk about these because I always felt like, Lord, because at the time I was like, Lord, first of all, one, who's going to believe me? <laughs> like, second of all, how do I even say this? And third of all, no, I don't think so. I'm just going to write it down and keep it secret. You know, <laughs> the religious will come for me with, you know, with, with, uh, with torches and, and, and pitchforks. Let them come. <laughs> I don't really care. Because I don't have, I don't, I don't serve you. You're not my master. And so what? You know? <laughs> right? Because then eventually what's going to happen is the Lord's going to show up to you. And you'll have the encounter. And then, it's not about apologizing to me. But then, it's going to blow the box, okay? Blow the lid right off the box and <laughs> dismantle the whole box. But anyway, the, the encounter I had with him, with Jesus... <laughs> I saw him standing by a door. It was like I was a hallway and he was standing by a door. <clears throat> and um, uh, and uh, <laughs> thank you, Holy Spirit, you're so good. Um, the person I was actually uh, expecting, I'm so sorry, has messaged me. And it ended up working out just fine. Thank you, Holy Spirit. So the so the thing is, I, he was standing at the, like this in the hallway, but he was or he was in, I saw I was in a hallway. Let me get it right. I was in a hallway, and he was standing in a doorway, and it was like a little ways down, and 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 it was like he was standing in light. The hallway was dark because the lights were off, and he was standing in the light or a lit the lit the lidded doorway I'm like what am I trying to say the lidded doorway and the door was open and he was standing in the door and I just kind of like looked a little bit because this was kind of new I've never been to this place before you know I could tell it was like in some huge palace so you know and I'm just like hmm you know and I walked over to him and when I came over you know and I, I looked up at him and and he like put his arms around me and we kind of spun and he shut the door and we were in this room and he just had this look like I, I always try to say this look because I can't, I can't, I just can't describe it. But he had this look that was kind of serious. It was kind of serious and, but he, but he wasn't like mad and, and you know, and, and everything from the song of songs, you know, and I'm just like you know, replaying it. Cause I was literally reading the song of songs when I had this encounter with Jesus. Sorry, I just kicked the table. I had this encounter with Jesus. And I kept saying, Jesus, I want to encounter you this way. I want to encounter you this way. And <clears throat> there's no, you know, obviously there's no fear. I'm not like afraid. Like, oh gosh. <laughs> but the river 
of water that flows from your belly. You've heard that, right? I know you've heard that. The rivers of living water will flow from your belly. And from your belly, rivers of living water will flow from your belly. Well, we say that and it's like, but there was a reason why he said that, okay? It wasn't just some really nice analogy because literal rivers <laughs> of water come out of your belly, okay? I didn't, I've never seen it before until that day. And it was like, he had the rivers of living water, of course, he's the... The Holy Spirit is telling, teaching me something really good. <laughs> the rivers of living water that flow from Jesus, Holy Spirit is telling me right now, are the rivers that flow down. It's the waters that flow down from the throne, the throne room. They go in and he's the, he's the door to access, um, to access these rivers of living water. And from his belly, so like he had like this, I want to say serious. The Holy Spirit helped me because I don't, I, it was, okay, thank you. <laughs> focused is the word. He had this focused look. Thank you so much. It's a much better word. And it's actually what it is. Thank you, Holy Spirit. He had this focused look. He was very focused and intent. Um, but he could, you, I could still see and experience so much love about him. There was nothing that looked like or felt like or seemed like there was anything bad going to happen or anything but he just had this focused look and he, I could and I look and he you know he looked he took his eyes from me and looked down so then I looked down I saw from his belly the living waters were coming out and into my belly and it was like we were sending that back and forth pushing that water back and forth to each other and I was like I didn't even know how to explain that like what <laughs> what and I'm thinking these are, and you could touch it like you could touch that water and 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 it wasn't like water water you could touch that water and it wouldn't like spill on the floor or anything nothing could disrupt that and through the the water, I was from him to me. There were gems and jewels, and um, you know, like diadems that were just they were being passed from him to me. And I was just like, you know. And I remember <clears throat> Cat Kerr talking about the Crystal Sea is called the Crystal Sea because there is all these crystals and gems and jewels at the bottom of the instead of sand, you know, at the bottom of the crystal sea. And, and so when I, I'm saying, and the, and I, and gems and jewels and all those things, they represent the love it, and they represent his love. I mean, think about how we look, think about them on the earth. They represent love and they were massive, like this big. I mean, <laughs> they weren't some little, you know, tiny, they were huge. They were like, I'm saying like rubies that were this big and they and it doesn't like, it doesn't hurt. It's not like hurting me, but it was just like, it was just, it was amazing. And I was just full on shocked. I was completely undone. I was just like, I was overwhelmed with love and I just felt like, oh my gosh, <laughs> this is the most amazing thing that's ever happened to me. <laughs> And I just hugged him and he just hugged me and I could just see that he just was so happy. I was so happy, but <laughs> he was so happy that someone and not just me, I'm not saying me, but the thing is when I'm in these encounters with him, it, no, it's like no one else exists because that's how he looks at you. When you're in an encounter with him, when he, you're speaking to him, he's looking at you like no one else existed. You were the number one top priority. We are all his favorites, okay? So not trying to sound like I'm something better than anybody else, I'm not. I, I realize that, I know that that's just because that's how he looks at, his, at each of us. <clears throat> but I don't want anybody else to feel that way, but the way he's looking and it's just so beautiful and the way he he looks at you and the way he feels about you. I have so many encounters, but the, those are the two 
that I feel like, that I know, excuse me, that the Holy Spirit wanted me to, oh, Holy Spirit and Jesus, thank you, Jesus, wanted me to talk about. And now I will go into this because <clears throat> the Lord orchestrated to where I actually had extra time. <laughs> because when we operate in obedience, you know, he knows. He knows someone was supposed to be coming over here. He knows all those things. Our job is just to be obedient to him <clears throat> and let him work it out without us trying to figure out how we're going to do it. It's just be obedient. There's beauty in obedience is what I tell my children all the time. There's beauty in obedience. If there's beauty when you just obey, even though you don't know how it's all going to work out when you just obey and allow him to work it out. There's just, there's beauty there. <clears throat> okay, so... <clears throat> not one blind eye turned. <clears throat> I take care of my own, says the Lord. Look into my word and hear my voice when I say, Come unto me, all who are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. I mean what I say, and I never lie, nor exaggerate anything. Truth is who I am. And truth is what you'll get and receive whenever I speak, says the Lord. My spirit is upon the earth. Reach out to me and know I will reach out to you. <laughs> That's so funny. Yeah, he wanted me to prerequisite this with those encounters. And like I said, he wants you to do this. And then that's funny because I didn't obviously plan on doing these things together. How he's saying he confirms it with reach out to me and I'll reach out to you. In my word, I have said, draw nigh unto me and I will draw nigh unto you, saith God. So if we draw our, draw ourselves to him, he will draw himself closer to us. That's what that means. So, and that was the, the prophetic word. So you have to understand prophetic words are not always prophecy, okay? It's a prophetic word or a rhema word because it's what the Lord is saying right now. So, okay, and the scripture he wanted me to give was Psalms 107, all of it, 1 through 43. <clears throat> Let everyone give all their praise and thanks to the Lord. Here's why. <laughs> Here's why. <laughs> Let everybody do this, and now I'll tell you why. <laughs> He's better than anyone could ever imagine. I love this. <laughs> just goes along with the, those encounters. He is better than anyone could ever imagine. Yes, he's always loving and kind. And he is faithful. I'm sorry, and his faithful love never ends. So go ahead. Let everyone know it. Tell the world how he broke through and delivered you from the power of darkness. And, ha and that's right, Holy Spirit. I do remember that. Also, this word is also the because of where everyone's at here right now in 2023 where we're at where we find ourselves this word is also for that okay um let's see tell the world how he broke through and delivered you from the power of darkness and has gathered us together from all over the world he set us free to be his very own some of us once wandered in the wilderness like desert nomads with no true direction or dwelling place, starving and thirsty, staggering. We become desperate and filled with despair. Then we cried out, Lord, help us, rescue us. And he did. He led us out by the right way until we reached a suitable city to dwell in. So lift your hands and thank God for his marvelous kindness and for all his miracles of mercy for those he loves. How he satisfied the souls of thirsty ones and fills the hungry with goodness. Some of us once sat in darkness, living in the dark shadows of death. We were prisoners to our pain, chained to our regrets. This is what we talked about on Saturday in Firetop. For we rebelled against God's word and rejected his wise, rejected the wise counsel of God most high. So he humbled us through our circumstances. Not that he put sickness, but that was that seed time and harvest is here to stay. So if you if you 
reject him and you go on into the world and do, you know, and, and it don't have to be as extreme as that. You could reject his, what he says by being offended with someone. When his word clearly says, forgive, and then you shall be forgiven of your sins. And it says to love and that love covers a multitude of faults or sins. And then that offense produced a harvest and that became your circumstance, whether it be pain, sickness, disease, being broke, cancers, all of those things, loss, lack, debt, <clears throat> a rebellious children. That's your circumstance. That's because of what you planted. God does not put sickness. I just want to make that very clear. Doesn't put sickness, disease, or any of that on on his on his children to teach them something. He doesn't kill a loved one so that other people can be saved. Jesus died so that everyone can be saved. There's so Jesus paved the way so that so that we don't have to receive God's wrath, okay? <laughs> Praise his name. So 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 he humbled us through our circumstances, watching us as we stumbled, with no one there to pick us back up. Oh, our pain became our punishment. I know people who can say hallelujah to that, or amen to that, I mean. Uh, amen to, yeah, our pain became our punishment. Then we cried out, Lord, help us, res rescue us, and he did. There's the hallelujah. His light broke through the darkness, and he led us out in freedom from death's dark shadow and snapped every one of our chains. That's what he's doing right now. He is breaking the chains and the bondages off of people that we put on ourselves or that gets put on us through generational curses that we don't know about. So lift your hands and give thanks to God for his marvelous kindness and his and for his miracles and mercy for those he loves. For he smashed through heavy prison doors and shattered the steel bars that held us back just to set us free. Hallelujah. Just to set us free. You're getting a picture. I painted you a picture in the beginning about who he is. Jesus, like that behind the scenes that no one ever talks about. And now you, he, this is his word confirming how he's so beautiful and how he would do all these things for us. Some of us were such fools bringing on ourselves, bringing on ourselves. Remember I said he does not do this. Bringing on ourselves sorrow and suffering all because of our sins. I have to turn the heat down because Lord have mercy. In conjunction with the presence of the Lord. Woo! <laughs> My goodness, it was earlier, it was cold, but now, my goodness. <clears throat> okay, bringing on ourselves sorrow and suffering all because of our sins. That just said that. Literally, it's our, see, it's the sin that's producing the harvest, and then it's, that's why. Sick and feeble, unable to stand the sight of food. We draw near to the gates of death. Then, see, all of that. You see there now that it was because of, because of sin that people were sick and feeble and some not able to even stand the sight of food. Drawing near to the gates of death. Then we cried out, Lord, help us, rescue us. And he did. God spoke the words, be healed. And we were healed, delivered from death's door. Hallelujah. Be healed. Healed. I release that healing to you right now in your body. Whatever it is that you find yourself suffering with, Lord, we, we, we repent for that sin. We repent for the bloodlines of, 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 of sin. Lord, we repent for corruption and witchcraft in every form of evil. We repent for it, whether we did it 
or whether we did it knowingly or unknowingly, we repent for it, we place the blood of Jesus on it, and we say, Lord, help them and rescue them and deliver them right now in the name of Jesus, that they be delivered from death's door, that sickness and disease shall no longer follow them, that sickness and disease would just fall off their body, that cancers and tumors just fall off their body right now in the name of Jesus. There, uh, uh, a quick testimony was my grandmother, she had cancer in her brain and they said they wanted to operate and cut her head open to operate operate and get the cancer out. And my father came in there and he said, in the name of Jesus, and he's speaking to the cancer, loose your hold. And that cancer, that tumor came out of her brain, out of her nose, and it was huge, out of her nose and fell onto her chest. Why? Because there's, there's no match. His, his name is matchless. Jesus' name is matchless. Death's door is matchless against Jesus. So lift up your hands and give thanks for his marvelous kindness and for his miracles and mercy to those he loves. Bring praise as an offering. That's what I was saying when I said I was singing to him and I was, you know, taking the flower and I was just tracing the outline of his face and his eyebrows and down the center of his face and just singing to him how much I love him. Bring your praise as an offering and your thanks as a sacrifice as you sing your story of miracles with a joyful song. <laughs> Some of us set sail upon the sea to faraway ports, transporting our goods from ship to shore. We were witnesses of God's power out in the ocean deep. We saw breathtaking wonders upon the high seas. We see all kind of stuff happen right now. God spoke. God spoke. He stirred up a storm, lifting high waves like or high waves with hurricane winds. Ships were tossed by the sea, swelling sea, rising to the sky then dropping down to the depths, reeling like drunkards and spinning like tops, everyone at their wit's end until even sailors despaired of life, cringing in terror. Then we cried out, Lord, help us, rescue us. And he did. God stilled the storm, calmed the waves, and he hushed the hurricane winds to only a whisper. We were so relieved, so glad as he guided us safely to harbor in a quiet haven. So lift your hands and give thanks to God for his marvelous kindness and for his miracles of mercy. For those he loves. For those he loves, okay? Not for everyone. Even though he loves every person. So every person who will call on to him, yes. But, he, but those he loves, meaning... When I say not to everyone, I'm saying the wicked, unless they turn and say, Lord, help us, rescue us, it's not going to happen. That's what I mean. They're like, oh, they're still in sin, but I'm just going to deliver them. No. Doesn't mean that he doesn't love them, but he is just too. He cannot override his self. Let, thank you, Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit wants me to say that there was a triggering that happened, a chain reaction that happened. They were in despair. And then they cried out and then God saved them. So there's always, it's conditional. That's what he wants. It's conditional. Not that he doesn't want to help everybody who needs help, but unless you cry out to him, you know, and I'm not saying, I'm not saying a person who doesn't know the Lord, you know, it's like, oh, I went through all this horrible stuff. And then, but somehow the universe made a way for me. That's God always beckoning people to come. That's not, there's no, the universe, nothing, okay? There's no such thing. The universe can't do anything except what God tells it to do. And it's the cosmos anyway, not the universe. So, just saying. And so, uh, take that, science. <laughs> science, you are there to uphold the word of God, not oppose it. I just come against every opposing spirit. Hallelujah. I thank you, Lord. So let, let's exalt him on high and lift up our praises in public. Let all the people and the leaders of the nation know how great and wonderful is Yahweh, our God. Whenever he chooses, he can dry up a river and turn the land into a desert. 
or he can take a fruitful land and make it into a salt water swamp. All because of the wickedness of those who dwell there. Didn't, do I really need to say something else about swamp? No, I don't. Except that it is being drained. And God is indeed cleaning house. But, we're at the end here. But, he also can turn a barren wilderness into an oasis with water. Hallelujah! Whew! He can make springs flow into desert lands and turn them into fertile valleys so that cities spring up. And he gives it all to those who are hungry for him. Hungry for him. Not, I'm feeling hungry, I need to go eat something. No. Hungry for him and his presence. He gives it all to those who are hungry. What did I just, that encounter? I'm like, I didn't, didn't know we, I mean, I didn't, I, I was flabbergasted. I didn't know there was something we could, I didn't know I could be like, Lord, let me just go do and do this. Like, I didn't know there was something that could be done. <laughs> yes, it's because we cannot fathom. Boy, goodness. The inside of my head is burning and my inside of my ears are burning. Hallelujah, Lord. They can, so so he says, he gives it all to those who are hungry. They can plant their fields and their vineyards there, there and reap a bumper crop and gather a fruitful harvest. Hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we just claim that. We claim your word that we shall, because we hunger for you, I almost hit the table, because we hunger for you, Lord. That you are going to withhold nothing from us. And then we are going to plant. Thank you, Holy Spirit. That that that, that uh, encounter I had where he showed me those fields. There was just beautiful fields and plains. And, and there was valleys and hills. And it was just beautiful rolling hills. And I loved it. It was gorgeous. Lord, we, that, we, um, that we can plant in those fields and, and, and plant vineyards, Lord. And reap a bumper crop and gather a fruitful harvest. All at the same time. Hallelujah. God will bless them and cause them to multiply and prosper. But others will be. See. There's that. He's going to distinguish. In this time. He's going to distinguish those who are for him. Against those who are not for him. You are those who've been playing and pretending. Well you ain't going to be able to play and pretend no more. Who, But. Others will become poor, humbled because of their oppression, tyranny, and sorrows. You know on this channel that we have talked about all of that right there. About the oppressions going on. About the tyranny that's happening. And about the sorrows that's coming upon has come upon people. And what God's been saying about it. If you don't know, please, you are invited to go back through and listen to each and every one of these videos that were on here for god pours contempt upon the arrogant abuse of power come on this i did not say this is also a word for today i'm gonna read it again hallelujah for god pours contempt upon their arrogant abuse of power heaping scorn upon their princes and making them wander among ruins but he raises up the poor and lowly with his favor, giving them a safe place to live where no one can touch them. I am Holy Spirit. I am going to read it again. But he raises up the poor and lowly with his favor, giving them a safe place to live where no one can touch them. No one can touch them. God will grant them a large family and bless them. The lovers of God will rejoice when they see this. Good men are glad when the evil ones are silenced. There's silence coming. It's coming. There's a great fall coming. Wait, God said it was the fall of the fall. He didn't say it was going to be completed in the fall. He said it was the fall of the fall. You, what did that mean? It means goes to down. 
And it means go in your prayer closet when you go sit down and get off of Facebook and off of social media and typing up your little crafty, offensive words because you're just so offended. It's the offense from your soul is so full that it, it just blah, 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 comes out your mouth and onto that keyboard and you think that you're so clever when really all you've done is reveal the contents of your heart because it says in his word out of the abundance of your heart your soul what's in you your mouth then speaks so what you need to do is get a mop to clean up all that word vomit that you done put on everything against every person who didn't fulfill what I expected. Well, no one really cares what you expected. This is about the Lord Jesus Christ. And we're going to do it his way. Well, you said, and, and da, 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 da. no, sweetie, you heard it that way. And what you should have did was take every prophecy that you heard to the Lord so that he could give you his divine insight. Because what you need is Holy Spirit discernment. Because you need to know what is right from almost right. And you need eyes to see. And then you can be like, well, it's on plain. It ain't plain, okay? Because I'll tell you what. God's word ain't just so plain. You need the Holy Spirit to reveal and open the secrets up of those words. Hallelujah. If his words are the same yesterday and today and forever because he has not changed. Because he is the same today, yesterday and forever. And his words are not going to return void unto him. Well, we tested the fruit and that fruit's no good. No, baby, you eating your own fruit. And that's why it's no good. Because you need to start going up there to your vineyard. And you need to start uprooting some things. And you need to get that soul healed so that you're not left behind. Because that's what's going to happen. And I'm not talking about the rapture. I'm talking about the move of his glory. It's coming because it's upon the earth. And what's going to happen? Where, where are you going to be at? What is the state of your heart, your soul, your vineyard? What state's that going to be in when the master comes? So that he can take assessment of that which he owns. Remember in the word it says that you are not your own? That you are bought with a per rights? So you're not your own. Therefore, that vineyard's not your own. And when he comes to check it and he sees that all you did was bury the talents that he gave you instead of making it multiply and getting your soul healed and doing the things and the works that he's called you to do. Instead of doing that, what's he going to do? What does it say in the word? It says he is going to take even the little that you had and give it to someone else. Hallelujah. So let's not be twisted in our mind and think, well, I don't need to do and I can just, well, you ain't fooled nobody but yourself, but yourself. And you're not, you don't want to be left behind in the move of his glory because he was going to come without the laying of on of hands. We've already seen it happen. I don't, I, when I do fire talk, I'm not, I can't lay my hand on nobody. It's through Zoom. But the anointing goes forth. It's going to be way greater than anything that I've done. Way greater. Way. What I've done is nothing. A speck. A drop. In the sea. That's nothing. I'm not fooling myself. Ha! I already know I'm a humble person. I will go on my face or in pent all day and just, and just worship him and say, Lord, humble me again. Lord. What else can I do to change, to be more like you? Ain't nobody arrived on this end. No one. I'm not afraid to say that. I don't care. Like, oh, well, if you're not perfect, yeah, you're absolutely right I'm not. Not perfect. But I'll tell you what, I'm going to do what the word says. But I'm going to check and make sure that I am doing what the word's telling me to do, what his word is telling me to do. So that way, everything I've said to you, I don't become a castaway. Isn't that also in the scriptures? Y'all got to learn to read this stuff and not sit here on your high horse and be like, well, I'm just glad that I'm saved because that you might find out real soon that all that I'm saved and I'm sitting on my soapbox was never actually the right place for you to be at. 
and you might see that train, God's train, just roll on out without you. Don't act like you arrived somewhere. You better humble yourself before the Lord and get into alignment with him so that you're not left behind. Because I don't want to see nobody left behind. I'll tell you what I know he doesn't either. But these choices are your choices. Yes, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. These choices are indeed your choices, says the Lord. You are in charge. You are the prophet of your own life. I have said in my word that I will not override your will. It is up to you, saith God, to get in alignment with me. I have beckoned, I have called, and I have stood at the door, says, says the Lord, of your heart, knocking, banging, clanging. But if you refuse to open the door to me, you shall indeed be sorry, says the Lord. Says the Lord, strong and mighty, worthy in all his ways, above everything and which is upon the earth and under it, saith the Lord thy God. Hmm. Let me get back here. I only got maybe two sentences left. Sentences. Sentences. <laughs> Easy for me to say. The lovers of God will rejoice when they see this. Good men are glad when the evil ones are silent. If you are truly wise. I love this. Holy Spirit, because I'll just be on his flow, the flow of Holy Spirit, wherever he's going. And then it just be straight up confirmed right after this in the scripture that I'm reading. <laughs> if you are truly wise, you'll learn from what I've told you. It's time for you to consider these profound lessons of God's great love and mercy. That again is Psalms 107. That's out of the Passion Translation. I know I'm normally out of the Amplified, but that was the Passion Translation. Hallelujah, because that's what he gave me. Praise his name. Lord, I just thank you. I have said, I've given the word. I've given the, everything you wanted me to do in the beginning. And I just thank you, Lord, that you are good and you are mighty and you are strong and you are everything that I will ever need. And I thank you, Lord, that this word is piercing through hearts and that change, true change is happening and it's going to happen for your glory and for your fame to increase. Not my fame, your fame to increase. In the name of Jesus, I seal every work and I seal the word in their hearts because immediately the devil comes to steal it. That's what the Bible says. But the devil immediately comes for that word because he doesn't want it to grow in your vineyard. You have to be ready. Just like, thank you, Holy Spirit. Just like the angels in the Garden of Eden with the flaming sword that was going every which way. You need to be ready with your flaming sword guarding your garden just the same. And take the, the enemy, the devil, out he wants to come here, give him a fight. That he's not going to want to do that no more. Maybe have him wanted posters of you. And be like, oh, here's that person that you don't, we don't want to go to that person. <laughs> That's a dead door. Don't go in there because they'll be ready to take you all the way down. I'm not going to go in there no more. I'm not going to go into that person's house. I'm not going to touch that person's family because the last time I just... Came in there one little foot. They was tearing me to shreds. And I'm not going to do that no more. And eventually you find out that big bad devil ain't big bad no more. Hallelujah. Praise his name. Amen. Shalom. Father, I just thank you. Remember to be obedient. Remember to be bold. Obedient to the Lord. Be bold for Christ. And be in a state of mind of being blessed. Like and sh share this message. To increase the fame of Jesus Christ. Because that is what we are made to do. In Jesus name. Hallelujah. Amen. And, and, and because these are his words. These are not my I mean these, these are his words. Yes I gave a vision in the beginning. Or an encounter in the beginning. The, again. This is being obedient to the Lord. So be obedient. Amen and amen. Shalom.